We're the people. The people vote and choose their own leaders, and they do it peacefully. And we're in a democracy. The will of the people always prevails. Yesterday, I spoke with President-elect Trump to congratulate him on his victory. And I assured him that I would direct my entire administration to work with his team to ensure a peaceful and orderly transition. That's what the American people deserve. Yesterday, I also spoke with Vice President Harris. She's been a partner and a public servant. She ran an inspiring campaign, and everyone got to see something that I learned early on to respect so much, her character. She has a backbone like a ramrod. She has great character, true character. She gave her whole heart and effort, and she and her entire team should be proud of the campaign they ran. You know, the struggle for the soul of America since our very founding has always been an ongoing debate and still vital today. I know for some people, it's a time for victory, to state the obvious. For others, it's a time of loss. Campaigns are contests of competing visions. The country chooses one or the other. We accept the choice the country made. I've said many times, you can't love your country only when you win. You can't love your neighbor only when you agree. Something I hope we can do, uh, no matter who you voted for, is see each other not as adversaries, but as fellow Americans. Bring down the temperature. I also hope we can lay to rest the question about the integrity of the American electoral system. It is honest, it is fair, and it is transparent. And it can be trusted, win or lose. I also hope we can restore the respect for all our election workers who busted their necks and took risks at the outset. We should thank them. Thank them for staffing voting sites, counting the votes, protecting the very integrity of the election. Many of them are volunteers who do it simply out of love for their country. And as they did, as they did their duty as citizens, I will do my duty as president. I'll fulfill my oath, and I will honor the Constitution. On January 20th, we'll have a peaceful transfer of power here in America. To all our incredible staff, supporters, cabinet members, all the people who have been hanging out with me for the last four years, God love you, as my mother would say, thank you so much. You put so much into the past four years. I know it's a difficult time. You're hurting. I hear you and I see you. But don't forget, don't forget all that we accomplished. It's been a historic presidency. Not because I'm president, because what we've done, what you've done. A presidency for all Americans. Much of the work we've done is already being felt by the American people, but the vast majority of it will not be felt, we felt over the next 10 years. We have, a, we, we have legislation we passed that's just only now just really kicking in. We're going to see over a trillion dollars worth of infrastructure work done, changing people's lives in rural communities and communities that are in real difficulty because it takes time to get it done. And so much more it's going to take time. But it's there. The road ahead is clear, assuming we sustain it. There's so much, so much we can get done and will get done based on the way the legislation was passed. And it's truly historic. You know, we're leaving behind the strongest economy in the world. I know people are still hurting, but things are changing rapidly. Together, we've changed America for the better. Now we have 74 days to finish the term, our term. Let's make every day count. That's the responsibility we have to the American people. Look, folks, you all know it in your lives. Setbacks are unavoidable, but giving up is unforgivable. Setbacks are unavoidable, but giving up is unforgivable. We all get knocked down. But the measure of our character, as my dad would say, is how quickly we get back up. 
Remember, a defeat does not mean we are defeated. We lost this battle. The America of your dreams is calling for you to get back up. That's the story of America for over 240 years and counting. It's a story for all of us, not just some of us. The American experiment endures. We're going to be OK, but we need to stay engaged. We need to keep going. And above all, we need to keep the faith. I'm so proud to have worked with all of you. I really mean it. I sincerely mean it. God bless you all. God bless America. And may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so that is what the incumbent president, Joe Biden, who's now a lame duck president of the United States of America, has to say. He's still taking, sticking to the point where he's insisting that this is an economy that is better than what he inherited, that this is, of course, the best economy, is, is how he put it. This is at a time when a lot of people in the United States of America are hurting because of what inflation has done to their incomes. Uh, he touched upon several points. He said that it is fine to be defeated, but it is important that uh, people need to get back up. This was Biden addressing his own constituency. Many of the Democrats were heartbroken by the drubbing that they've received at the polls. Uh, the Democrats are in a bit of a mood for soul searching. They're trying to figure out what actually went wrong, although many of the experts had been saying and had been saying for quite some time that the Biden administration's record on several issues, especially the economy, was very patchy. The ruinous was the doll that Joe Biden had been backing in the Ukrainian battlefield for the last two and a half years and in the Gaza Strip. That war of the Israeli nation that Joe Biden has backed to the hilt. These are some of the issues that have been playing on the minds of the American people and the American people have spoken. And now Joe Biden will, of course, walk into the sunset. He'll still remain the president of the United States of America till the first week of January when the transition of power will, of course, happen. But Donald Trump, the reality is this. Donald Trump has staged what is being dubbed as perhaps one of the biggest and one of the most improbable comebacks in America's political history. And, and that is how this election, of course, has come to an end, where Joe Biden, the incumbent, will now, of course, exit. The Democrat candidate Kamala Harris has lost, and it is the Republican contender, the former President Donald Trump, who will again be the next president of the United States of America. All right, now to give us more insights into this, we're joined by Voice of America's correspondent, Katharina Gibson, who's joining us live from the United States from Washington, D.C. Katharina, this, this, of course, was uh, an address that we were expecting Joe Biden to make. Uh, what, what's your assessment of what he said? Because he still seems to be sticking to the fact that this, this is the best economy that he's now leaving behind. But inflation and the fact that inflation had pinched the American people very, very hard in the last four years is being dubbed as one of the key reasons as to why the Democrats ended up on the losing side this time around. That's right. So I think you would hear from the Biden White House and heard just a few moments ago that by many indicators, the American economy is doing quite well. The jobs reports have been good. The inflation rate has gone down. The stock market has stayed very strong. But that doesn't matter if the voters on the ground are not feeling that. And clearly, from the way that this election went, American voters were very concerned about the state of the economy. And they felt like those numbers that the Biden White House has been talking Talking about these past few months that Kamala Harris talked about on the campaign trail are just not trickling down to them. We also know that if you look at elections around the world, incumbents have had issues. They have lost their elections, so the U.S. is simply joining that crowd in terms of governments that have struggled in this post-COVID pandemic economy. Also, uh, Katharina, if, if is, is Joe Biden even listening to members of his own party? For instance, 
uh, you know, members of his own party have now come forth and said that some of the issues that we perhaps were fighting on did not resonate enough with the people of the United States of America, where the issue where Donald Trump had built it for him was the issue of illegal immigrants and inflation. But for the Democrats, the two top issues that they were going in and asking votes for the American people was the issue of saving the American democracy. This was a very abstract concept for a lot of people to understand. And the other one, the much more substantial one, was that of abortion and women's reproductive rights. Did the, American, did the Democrat Party get the issues wrong when they went to the American people this time around? Well, if you look at the results from this election, you could certainly make that argument that the Democratic Party did not make the right arguments to voters, that they went too hard on that democracy argument at the end. But the thinking was that you need people to take a step back and really think about the direction this country is going in. They would argue that they've done both. They would argue that they've improved the economy since the COVID pandemic, while also making the argument that Donald Trump is unfit to hold office. Obviously, that didn't work. Obviously, there needs to be some soul searching among the Democratic Party. And it's going to be a long time until they can figure out how to make that argument. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Katharina, for joining us and getting us that perspective there. Good to be with you. And also the broadcast being joined by our correspondent, Susan Terani, who, of course, has been tirelessly covering this entire election process for us. Susan, this, this is a moment of truth for the Democrat Party. We just heard Joe Biden there. A lot of people would, of course, turn around and say that perhaps Joe Biden has still not understood or rather has still not felt the pulse of the American people. Now, Bernie Sanders said something very interesting, that a Democrat party that has abandoned the working class should not feel surprised if the working class has abandoned the Democrat party. Why is it that this is not being registered with Joe Biden? It's not just Joe Biden. It's not being registered with anyone at the de Democrat uh, stronghold, Democrat party or even Democrat voters, too. And I'm talking about those voters uh, that vote blue no matter what. They're known to be the elite, you know, the quote-unquote educated, the Ivy League crowd. Uh, they just, it just won't register that, you know, there is a wide swath of this country that has felt forgotten and no amount of out-of-touch celebrity endorsements are going to convince them. It'll actually repel them and make them angrier. But, uh, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders, he's, for what he is, he calls himself a social Democrat. He might have his supporters. But one thing is for sure with Sanders, he really stood his grounds uh, throughout his career. And, you know, even the Democrats sometimes shied away from him. They decided to embrace him. We saw during this campaign, notably uh, the convention, the Democrat convention, you may re remember that he had like a time slot that was prime time. But um, again, you know, they went to Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, AOC type kind of policy styles, and they forgot the middle. And the middle America is where, you know, people just want to live their lives, go on vacation with their kids. They want to lead normal lives. They don't want the extreme right. They don't want the extreme left. And I think this needs to register with the Democrats and stop being so condescending to Trump voters. That might be a good start as well. I think that, that that's a crucial point because a lot of them are, in <laughs> fact, talking as if the American public does not know what is good right. for them. And a lot of the Democrat leaders who are coming out and making statements, it almost appears as if they're talking down at the American people saying that they've made a wrong choice by electing Donald Trump. But looking forward, Joe Biden is still going to be in the White House for the next 70 odd yeah. days. He is effectively what is in American parlance called the lame duck president. So what do we expect from yeah. him going on from here? He's going to try to pass some policies. Remember, Joe Biden at this point, this sort of every speech he gives is sort of like his farewell address really to the nation. Uh, we saw him more measured. He didn't talk about divisions or anything because he really doesn't have much at stake. As you mentioned, he's not only lame duck, but this is probably the end of his career. Um, I think moving forward, the Democrat Party are going to try to pass as much legislation as possible because we don't, we still don't know whether or not Congress is going to go to the Republicans or not Senate already went. And, you know, those are the chambers that are the most important. Will do their best. I don't know if world leaders will engage with this administration to try to find solutions to world problems. That's one aspect of it. 
you know, they have to do some soul searching. I mean, Kamala Harris doesn't seem like a person that can lead the Democrat Party. Joe Biden is retiring. You know, we'll have to wait and see how they want to move forward. I think they're going to focus a lot on that. Indeed. Thank you very much, Indy Tsun, for joining us and getting us that perspective there.